If you're spending money every month on agencies, freelancers, and other outside experts, but it's not delivering the results that you are hoping for, there's one big change that you can make, and this is it. Join us for Impact Live 2024 in Hartford, Connecticut this October 14th through the 16th. Over three days, business owners, CEOs, and marketing and sales leaders will learn proven strategies to drive business growth. Attend expert-led sessions on marketing, sales, leadership, and AI, and get a chance to network with industry pros just like yourself. Discover how companies like yours are dominating their markets. Secure your spot at impactplus.com backslash impact dash five. And for all of our endless customers, listeners, we have an exclusive discount code that'll save you a hundred bucks. So when you're on the checkout page, just enter the code ECPOD100 in all caps for a hundred dollars off. And now through July 31st, we have our early bird special as well, which you get $200 off. So get in there before it's too late. We'll see you there at Impact Live 2024 up in Hartford, October 14th through the 16th. Welcome back to Endless Customers. My name is Alex Winter, and today we are joined by John Becker, a coach and trainer here at Impact. John, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, happy to have you here. And today we are talking about content managers. And I think a good place to start is really what a content manager does. And then I think we can dive deeper into like why businesses should be entertaining this idea, why this role is important, how it can help their business, and then, you know, content as a whole, why it's important as well. But let's kick things off with what is a content manager? What do they do specifically? Yeah. And we use the phrase or we use the term content manager, but this person might be called a content writer, a content director, a content marketing manager. And I think in some ways you can almost think of it as a communications director because okay. what this person does at the very basic level, we tell, we tell our businesses that this person is a content writer. They're going to be producing the content that goes on your website, the educational content that will help your visitors become customers, help your leads become buyers, et cetera. So all of that type of content, blog Which articles, are, yeah buyer's guides, case studies, things like that. So that's the biggest chunk of this person's job. Second to that would be managing the website. So making sure that your messaging is on target, that if you have a landing page or if you have a service page or anything like that, they're going to own that, the, the messaging, the writing, the, the copywriting for the words that someone encounters when they encounter your business. Yeah. By an extension, that means they would also often handle social media, um, social posts, things like that. They might handle video scripts or um, newsletters. So anything that's written will fall under this person's purview. So that's that's a large that's a lot. volume of, of responsibilities. Yeah. Um, and right now, I think in many cases, companies tend to outsource for that. Mm -hmm. um, and so they might be resistant to putting this person in place because they think I've gotten this far without this person. Do I really need this person? Um, we believe that you do. We believe that as soon as, you know, within a few weeks of having this person on staff, you will think, how did I never have a content manager before? This person is instrumental to me communicating or our business communicating as effectively as possible across a ton of different mediums. Yeah, it's so true. And it's, when we talk about brand voice, it's so important to get that right because your brand directly affects your sales and your products and your services and how people perceive those things in the marketplace. So it's it's critical. And I think a lot of people do outsource it. Or maybe we have some CEOs or certain business owners that are doing it themselves because they're trying to really, you know, get things off the ground and get things moving. Um, but that also sometimes puts you too close to it. And it's nice to have someone's perspective that's dedicated, that's a good writer, that's versed in this stuff that can really help develop that brand messaging. Does that sound like? Yeah. The right and I thing? think it's a, it's a mistake that a lot of business businesses make in this regard mm -hmm. is they tend to think I need someone with industry experience to come in and be my content manager. We believe the opposite. We believe that in most cases, someone outside of your industry is actually going to be more effective no kidding. in this role. Because just as you said, they have enough distance to be able to explain something as clearly as possible. Because ultimately, in most cases, your buyers are not from within your industry. They're from somewhere outside or they are private citizens or they're a business that is adjacent or 
indirectly connected to your specific industry. So having a content manager who isn't wrapped up in lingo, who doesn't only talk about the way that people talk within the business or within the industry yeah. allows them to explain things in a way that's more accessible to a wider audience, depending on whoever you're talking to. Yeah. That jargon, the industry jargon tends to come up a lot and we see that a lot. And being direct and being honest is, is really, it seems so simple and easy, but it's really not that simple and easy to do until you really focus on it and have someone dedicated that can help with that. You mentioned too outsourcing and outsourcing can be a great resource and there are a lot of great agencies out there. So this is just generally speaking, but how can that also negatively affect businesses when they have somebody that's not embedded within their organization writing about product services that maybe they know about, maybe they're not so well versed in, like where does that end up uh, going uh, when you see different situations like that? Yeah, so I spent really the last six months talking to CEOs from a bunch of different businesses, a bunch of different industries. And I took three main things away from this whole process. Number one is that most of these businesses grew in what I would call the old fashioned way. They built networks, they delivered great service, they most of their business comes from repeat customers or from referrals. Right. And Which if you are in that position, that is great. That's great. You've done the important hard work. Sure. There are businesses that grow through promotions and slick advertising, but those usually aren't built to last, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. So along the way, these businesses have also invested in marketing largely because they think they're supposed to. Right. It's like part of the, we have to do this. We've, we've reached a certain scale and now it's time to start reinvesting into the marketing piece of it. Yeah. And that's the second thing that I learned is that they often don't really know how to, bro how to market their business. Mm -hmm. So they hire an agency or they talk to some freelancers or they have someone in the office do a little bit of marketing here or there. And there's nothing wrong with any of those. But ultimately, I think the, the experience for your customers isn't as consistent and as strong as you want it to be. And in some cases, in some industries, maybe Facebook ads works great for you or Google search ads, or maybe you send out mailers and that's killing it for you. But I think in a lot of cases, it feels like these businesses are succeeding despite their marketing, not because of it. Oh, that's it's well said. They've been sort of dumping money into this because they think they're supposed to. Um, Right, but what real ROI are they getting from that investment? Yeah, and marketing is notoriously hard to pin return on. Mm -hmm. We know that it's always been the case since we were talking TV ads and print ads and billboards, and we're still talking that. But even in the digital space, we have way more data. It's still really hard to attribute revenue to marketing. It is, and you guys know that it's it's just difficult. So the third thing that I learned from all of these businesses, and it's connected to the first two is I think in many cases, they're spending way more on marketing than they think they are. And that's kind of a, like even, even CEOs who feel very in touch and are paying really close attention to the budget, often they're working with you know this freelancer who does their social posts, and they're working with this agency which does SEO for them, and they're working with these people who produce videos once a year, Got it. and they're working, and these are all, all different these, yeah. line items in different budgets, and they rarely take stock of how much they're actually spending. Right, because that stuff all adds up. Oh, Especially yeah, when it up. compounds monthly over time. And yeah, that becomes a, a real thing. I was talking to a CEO last week, and he and his company spend something like $4,800 a month on Google Ads. Okay. They can't really contribute a lot of revenue there. They get a handful of leads. Most of these leads aren't the kind of leads that become customers. Interesting. But they do it, and they do it month over month. And there's some frustration there, but he doesn't really know what else to do. So he just, keep, he just keeps doing it. Like, just let's just double it. down. They're just going to keep hitting it. Because you got to do something. That's true. Okay. And so I think the original question that you asked is, there are some dangers to outsourcing, that you might end up with content that doesn't sound like you or is interchangeable for anyone else in your industry or just feels derivative. But I think... Wrapped up in that is why we have some resistance to hiring a content manager. Someone says, well, that's another salary. I don't want to spend this much per month. And if we actually pull all of the different money that they are spending per month on marketing for that SEO agency, for that freelancer, for that Google ads, all the agency, different peoples and things. And yeah, pull it together. Yeah. I guarantee you are spending way more than this person's salary. 
And if you think about what we started talking with, talking about, that this person will be your, your writer, your website manager, social media, newsletter, there's a lot of really effective marketing that this person can do for you, likely for less than what you're spending now, if you were to aggregate all of those different line items and all those different budgets that you're spending. Yeah, that's fascinating to me, because that was one of my questions. I can hear in my head business leaders and CEOs going like, yeah, but budget, man, I don't have... Yeah you're talking about salary and then there's insurance and like the, the list goes on and it's like, I can't afford that. But that may actually not be true. And I think it's something that business owners don't realize that they can actually make work. And to your point, you would then have a dedicated person on your staff. So you're not calling an agency or trying to figure out, oh wait, this isn't the agency. This is that freelancer person. So I have to, all that, like, I don't want to call it a mess, but all of that goes away and you have this central source of truth basically. I think you can call it a mess. Yeah, I, think, I think it is It is a mess. And safe. I know we're talking about content manager, but I, I want to shift because we also, also tell people that they should hire a videographer. Right. Because I, people learn through video too. That's really important. And I'm only going there because I want to share this very brief uh, story from also from a client. This is a client who's a distributor of um, manufacturing equipment and, uh, and they work nationally and internationally. One of the companies that supplies them was... Uh, running some sort of online event. And this company has a new videographer that they just brought on. They found out about this on a Friday. On a Friday afternoon, they said to him, could you spin up a quick video for this? He did a little research, wrote a quick script, filmed it, edited it, and had it posted that same afternoon. That's amazing. Wow. Absolutely. I was and giggling earlier because in any other in any other scenario, that sounds crazy. And as a as a videographer, if someone on a Friday afternoon is like, hey, can you just whip something up real quick? That doesn't usually mean real quick. It means like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to do a bunch of work as fast as I can. But it's exactly what you're saying is yeah. that when you are working with an agency, there is a process for getting anything back. Right. And it's often slow and it's often laborious and there's a lot of back and forth. And if right. you have a content manager or a videographer on staff, you can suddenly get things turned around way more quickly. Right. And as we always say to our clients, that means a lot more content gets produced. You're able to just tackle more topics, post on more sites, explore more platforms. You're able to experiment and trial a lot more ideas and messages and um, any creative impulse that you have. Yeah. And suddenly it, it's... There's, a, there's so much more output, so much more creativity that can come from it rather than you're working with an agency that's going to produce three articles per month. And if you want any more, you need to pay more. And Pony up. Yeah. Yep. Or if you need something at three o'clock on a Friday, they're most likely not going to be able to get it to you until sometime on Monday at the earliest. At the earliest. Right. Because so they're juggling other clients. Of course. And yeah. Yeah. I think, too, there's some value in in being able to react to the marketplace. You know, if you're, if you have a salesperson on your team or a coach or somebody that hears something from a, a potential client or that sees something, you can react to it a lot quick, more yeah. quickly and create content around that much faster than what we were just talking about, where by the time it actually comes out a few days later, you've missed the boat and that client or potential client may be already onto yeah. the next thing. So there is an immediacy in this digital world yeah. that we, that we are in these days. Yeah. So why why does there need to be this mindset shift? And how do you as a coach, because I know you train and coach a lot of companies on this, how do you create that mindset shift with CEOs and with business leaders so that they they start to see the value of this and why it's important to make these shifts or how it could help their business? Yeah. Mindset shifts are hard and change is hard. Change is hard. Mm -hmm. And the businesses we work with are successful. They've gotten to where they are, as I said, through through a lot of hard work and so it's not like they're falling off a cliff and everything's on fire and they need something to solve it. Right. They're That's successful businesses. So in order to inspire change, you have to help them see what's possible. Okay. And I think at the core of that, what I always say to a business is that I believe that, and this is something we hear from Marcus, we hear from Chris, we hear from anyone who believes in endless customers, is that the way people buy has changed and that the future of marketing is education. 100%. People want information to make a decision. And if you are the one who offers that information, you build a relationship with a customer. Right. And if, if there are plenty of marketing tips and techniques out there that are about gimmicks and hacks 
and you know, kind of trickery. And Endless Customers is the absolute other end of the spectrum. It's about sincerity, it's about honesty, it's about candor, it's about transparency. And if a business owner can see that and see the power of that, then a content manager feels like a natural next step because we want to share who we are as a company. We want content that sounds like us, that shows our people, that helps people get to know who we are as a brand. Absolutely. And we all know brands and have brands that we trust because they do exactly that. And we also know the brands that are kind of gimmicky and do the the flash in the pan to try to get you to buy stuff. And it's not nearly as good of an experience because you're you're basically getting tricked into buying things that you necessarily don't need. So yeah. um, I, do, I do totally agree that building trust is huge. And I think a lot of business owners these days are trying to find ways in this digital age and with AI and with everything going on, to continue to lean heavier into that because I feel like with AI, there's a lot more disruption of, is it, is it really that person talking or is that an AI generated yeah. version of that person? And so like, it, it, I feel like now more than ever trust and being able to build that is, is critical. Right. So there's more skepticism than ever. Correct. There's more of, uh, you know, sort of that, that trust deficit or that, that gap between what, uh, between your business and your customer who right. customers are suspicious and, as I said, skeptical of whatever they see online. Um, and they're also skeptical of sales pitches. They're also skeptical of any piece of content that says, look how great we are, look how great this product is, this service is, because they don't want, you know, they want sincerity. They want to know what's going to be great for them, not a business that's just, you know, blowing hot air. Right, right. Very well said. So what, with that in mind, what kind of trade sh- um, should someone be looking for in a content manager? So like if you're, you're, you're bought in, the mindset shift is happening, you're starting to track in the right direction, and now it's time to hire a content manager, what, what are the skill sets, what are the prereqs that you're looking for yeah. to make sure that they're going to be a good fit? Yeah. So we often tell businesses that they should look for a, a journalism grad or an English grad, someone who has experience writing and can produce content relatively quickly. Um, obviously, AI can a- aid in a lot of this, and we could talk about that eventually. Um, but all the hires or all the characteristics you would want in any hire, you want someone who is inquisitive, who's motivated, who is uh, coachable and wants, you know, sort of wants the job, wants to grow into it. I think those attributes are better than deep experience or someone who's been a content, you know, has, has years of experience or been a content manager before, if they haven't, that's okay. If they can show that they can be a kind of journalist for your business uh, and they have that skill set, everything else they can learn along the way, especially if they bring that coachability mindset, that ability to, to they're going to grow into the role. And so the person you hire at day one almost doesn't even resemble who that person's going to be at day 365 and beyond because they're going to have grown so much as they learn your industry, learn your business. Totally. As they become embedded in your business, that just, they become part of that brand voice yeah. and they really get to live and breathe and eat it every day, yeah. which is, that's a game changer. But, you know, for some businesses too, and this is what you specialize in, right, is coaching and training, there's an accountability piece. And, you know, a CEO might be able to hire a content manager and have them work uh, and learn the business and start to get to a decent place. But to really get that that rhythm and that consistency that we that we push for here so that you really get the results we're talking about, what does that look like and why can coaching sometimes really aid in like the progression of like just speeding things up and turning the dial up a little faster for from like an effectiveness standpoint? Yeah, you use the word accountability and I think that's really important. It's one of the most um, impactful things that a coach brings to a situation Mm -hmm. because if you have a content manager, it's easy for that person to be kind of sequestered away into part of a business and they set a meeting with a salesperson, the salesperson breaks it or they want to run a brainstorm and people don't show up. So there are two things that I think you need. One is you need that top to bottom buy-in. You need the CEO, the leadership team to be able to say, look, this is important and this person is heading up, this content manager is heading up this initiative and if they make a meeting, you're expected to be there. If they publish an article, you should read it. If they post on social media, like follow them, follow our business because that's the kind of rising tide that lifts all boats. The other thing that I think we need, um, or you don't need, but I think it's extremely valuable is having that coach, that outside perspective that allows you to supercharge that learning. And we all know from any time in our personal lives that it 
often when you learn something new, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of mistakes, and yes. that's very valuable. That's probably the best way to learn something, really. It's, it's true. No, mistakes are part of the process. 100%. It, it really is. But if someone's paying you, they would like those mistakes to be fewer in number. And that's what a coach does. That's what a trainer does. It allows you to grow what might take you three years to do that in six months because they know those potential or all too common mistakes and can help you avoid them and help you um, every step that you would take is is tripled based on right. uh, having someone there to, to help you move forward. Just like in anything else, if you were learning to play the guitar, you can learn on your own and you'll get so far so fast, or you can learn with a teacher and you're going to get way faster because you're not going to make those same mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's really important. And from an accountability standpoint, I need that. I think a lot of us need yeah. that. It's always, it's always good to have that p- accountability partner to keep you, keep you honest, especially when we're talking about two to three articles a week. And if you're the content manager, that's managing articles and blogs, plus the website, plus social media, there's a lot of moving parts. So to keep track of that, it's totally manageable, but you need to be set up for success and yeah. figuring that out uh, on your own can be challenging sometimes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and what, what a trainer or a coach brings to the situation is, look, I've worked with a previous client and they use this system for project management. As you said, there's a lot of stuff you're working on at a given time. If you're not organized, things are going to fall through the cracks. Yeah. Um, and so that, that coach or that trainer can help you say, try this, try that. There's this tool. There's this process. Next time you do this, imagine doing it this way because they have the experience that you don't. So this is, uh, I've been waiting this whole conversation to ask you this question, John, because I know you interface with a lot of clients. You help a lot of companies onboard content managers and do exactly what we're talking about and keeping them accountable and coaching them. And uh, so my, my question here, right, do you have a story from the streets, something you can share with us? Um where a business, a CEO was, was trying to hire on a content manager and didn't know where to start, or you had to bridge this gap, shift the mindset, and then actually onboard somebody, and maybe what that what that's looking yeah. like these days. Yeah. yeah. So first thing that I'll say, and I'll talk about both content manager and videographer, is that a lot of CEOs come into this role or, or come into hiring this role and think, I'm never going to find this person. This is going to take forever. This is going to be, it's going to take me weeks to even get a job posting out there, then more weeks through interview, onboarding. We're talking about someone who's not going to be up and running for months. Right. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Wow. Oh, that's great. Uh, first of all, there are tons of good candidates out there. I'll, I'll share a small example of a, a local company who was hiring a videographer, which is a unique set of skills. And they thought, we want someone in the office. How are we going to find anyone for this role? Like, do people even want this role? Um, they posted a job on a Monday by that Thursday, they had over 350 applicants. By that Friday, they had 475 applicants. So in five days, they had almost 500 applicants? Local. <laughs> wow. Crazy, right? Wow. Um, okay. Same thing true with content manager. They, they think it's, it's going to take a really long time, and they're not going to, or they'll struggle to find someone qualified. I disagree. And I've seen a lot of evidence to the contrary. Wow. We have, and you can find them on our website, we'll put them in the show notes, job description templates that you can use, onboarding guides that you can use. You can find this person, and I'm not saying you should rush into this, because of course you do your due diligence, you you hire smart, Sure. but it's not going to take as long as you think. And you can get a job posting up in a matter of days, you can get applicants within also a matter of days, go through a couple of steps in the in the. interview process, have them create uh, some content from scratch so you know that they can produce at a, at a good clip. Right, give them like um, a test, as, as some type of a test or have something. Have them do an interview, have right. them make a video, depending on what role you're talking about. Okay. Um, so that it can all happen within a couple weeks. Uh, and then once that person's on board, what we say at Impact is the best way to learn the job is to do it. And so we have our videographers producing videos within the first few days uh, sometimes even on the first day, get your camera set up, shoot a bio video, just get your people comfortable being on camera. Yeah. Same thing with a content manager. Schedule an interview, write a piece of content, get it out there within the first week, really, uh, so that you're immediately up and running. But that's the best way to learn about the brand, to learn about the the people, the culture, the industry, mm-hmm. is just start doing it. So a process that might seem daunting because you think it's going to take months you know, today is like the beginning of July. You could get someone 
on board working by the end of July. It's it's completely feasible, and I've oh. seen it happen a bunch of times. Wow. I love what you said, too, about the best way to do it is to just do it. And I, that's so true, because I remember when we were starting this podcast off, and you were, you were writing a lot of our content mm-hmm. and overseeing all the content for it, and we hadn't really done a podcast like this before. So at, at the beginning, it wasn't as good as it is now. And in six months from now, it's not going to be as good as it is. You know what I mean? Like, that's just part of the progression of anything. Like, the more practiced you are, the more you do something, the better the better you get at it, the more comfortable you get with it. Absolutely. And those first articles, those first episodes, those first videos are not going to be your best. Right. We know that. That's how it is for anybody, for anything. But if you keep waiting to get to the higher level by just sort of, you know, practicing and planning. Um, it, it's not as effective as actually doing it and filming and writing and getting that content out there. It's, it's, you, go, you said before about accountability, and I think right. you were asked to publish this podcast. And the fact that you did it meant you had like a deadline and it meant you had a deadline the next week and the next week and the next week. Each one gets better. Uh, and same thing is true for really any work, but certainly for content, because ultimately, the world will give you feedback on your content. If it's a social post, if it's a video, if it's an article, you'll get feedback that can help you get better. But if you just stay in your own head and think, well, I don't know if this is good enough, I don't know if this is funny enough or clever enough or deep enough or like whatever it is, right. um, you'll never move forward. Like put stuff out there, get feedback from the world, get the, the metrics that you track um, to show whether something's been effective or not, learn from that, get better. I absolutely love that. And I I love that because your audience is the most important part. And I think the mistake that a lot of us make, I've done it, we've all done it, is it's all about me and it's all about our story and our people. And that stuff is important, but ultimately that's not who you're speaking to. You're speaking to your specific audience, your potential clients. You need to listen to what they want. You need to listen and really understand what their needs, desires are so you can meet them where they are. That's what it's all about. And that's how you learn. So I think that's really, really great advice. So everyone out there listening, (laughs) good advice here. Um, Any closing thoughts before we wrap up here today, John, on content managers and just what we've been talking about in general? Something you just said, Alex, really, uh, really struck me, which is think about, think of your audience and just think about the way that you buy, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Think about what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you trust one business over another business. Um, and we know, I know that content is a very broad umbrella term, but chances are you engage with content from that business. It's website, it's articles, it's social posts, it's videos, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to know a brand. And that's what ultimately is going to make you go in one direction versus another. A content manager allows you to personalize and control that brand better than if you work with an agency. I think in the age of AI, and AI is really important to a content manager. It's, it's absolutely a supercharger. They should be using it in various ways. Yeah. But ultimately, a content manager is a personalizer of your brand. It allows you to go from that interchangeable uh, derivative content that anyone could produce to produce something that's unique and special and reflective of who you are as a business. Yeah. That's what it gives you. That's the advantage that this person gives you. And all the other things that you said, Alex, it's the, the turnaround is so much faster. The quality is higher. The output is so much better. And if you're able to, to come back to what we were talking about at first, if you're able to really audit your whole budget and you realize how much you are spending on marketing right now, and maybe for questionable returns, this is the better bargain. We talk to, we talk to businesses all the time who say, Well, I'm spending $1,200 a month on my SEO agency. I don't totally know what they do for me, but I am. And I'm spending, you know, $1,500 a month on LinkedIn posts. They're not really all that interesting and they feel kind of cookie cutter, but that's what we do. And and all of these things that add up, if you could reduce and, and wipe some of those expenses off your books, put it into a content manager, suddenly you have more personal, more content, that's more personal, uh, that's more aligned with what your buyers want, more aligned with what the questions you're being asked in the sales process. It's such a better move. Yeah, authenticity. That's what it's all about. Name of the game. Yeah, so John, for people that have follow-up questions or want to pick your brain more about this subject, how can they get in touch with you if they want to follow up? They can find me on LinkedIn or through the Impact website uh, via my email or, or through any contact form. 
Excellent. Thank you for being on the show. It's great having you. Yeah. Great conversation. Thanks, Alex. Anytime. All right. And for everyone out there listening and watching, this is Endless Customers. I'm Alex. See you in the next episode. Thank you.